Greetings fellow guitar travellers, it's Ryan J Parker here and welcome to another episode of Theory and Harmony and this week's episode is Diminished Gateway. Yes, do not be afraid, be very afraid. I'm going to explain to you exactly what this concept is, the Diminished Gateway. I'm going to show you how to use it in your own compositions. It creates a very, very cool and interesting effect. It allows you to modulate between incredibly distant keys, but still sound very smooth and natural. Well, anyway, before we get into that, I'm going to inevitably plug my own website. That's www.roundjparker.com. Go check it out. There's tons of stuff on that site, most of it which is free. You can subscribe to the website, stick your email address in the subscribe box, hit subscribe, even more free stuff. There is a store where you can buy stuff. You can also get all my stuff on Amazon now, if you're in the UK or Europe. Um, you can also follow me on Facebook if you like, on Twitter, though I detest Twitter loath. Um, let's see what else. My stuff is on SoundCloud. There's tons of backing tracks on SoundCloud, all of which are downloadable for zip de doo -da. So get in there. All right, well, on with today's lesson, the terrifying sounding diminished gateway. Let's rock. Now here's a question for you. Do you remember a time, a long time ago, when the director Roland Emmerich used to make good movies? Mm, it was a long time ago, wasn't it? He did do Independence Day, which was tremendously good fun. All the other movies since then have been utter dog shit. But before that, he made a movie called Stargate, which is an awesome film with a very young looking James Spader in it. Now, why am I bringing this nonsense up? Well, it's because the diminished gateway is basically the Stargate. It enables you to join together two very distant locations, in this case, two very distant keys, and move between them seamlessly, and with lots of cool special effects as well. So, let's just talk about exactly how we're going to do this and how it all works. Righty, now, in the last lesson, when we looked at the properties of a diminished seventh chord, we learned that really it was four chords in one, or one chord in four. So for instance, G sharp diminished seventh chord is the same as a B diminished seventh chord, is the same as a D diminished seventh chord, is the same as an F diminished seventh chord. They're all the same chord because they all contain the same notes. Now. The property of a diminished seventh chord is that it has a tendency to want to resolve up a semitone. So G sharp diminished seventh wants to resolve to some sort of A. Now, actually, it's not very bothered about what sort of A it resolves to as long as it gets some of that upper semitone resolution goodness. It's not fussy about what quality it resolves to. All right, so G sharp diminished seventh resolves up a semitone to major or up to A minor, works as well, can even resolve to A7, that works, can even resolve to A minor 7 flat 5, and then that will probably resolve to something else, but the point being is that as long as it goes up a semitone, it's like job done, happy, it sounds good to me, I can retire and lay on a beach. So. The minor seventh chords want to resolve up a semitone. So let's just discuss major and minor keys just now. G sharp, the minor seventh chord resolves to what? Well, it's quite happy to resolve to A major. It's equally delightedly delirious to resolve to A minor. All right, okay. But now let's invert the diminished seventh chord. So the next inversion for G sharp, the minor seventh chord is B diminished seventh. Now, this B diminished seventh chord wants to resolve up a semitone to what? Well, let's figure it out. B diminished resolves up a semitone to C major or C minor. It's not bothered. So let's just stop at that point and just think about what we've learned so far. If we try to change chords between the keys of A minor and C minor, normally that would be a very abrupt and not to say brutal modulation that you would only really do for a jarring effect, it certainly doesn't sound smooth at all because as we know, if we know our diatonic theory, A minor and C minor, there's no key where A minor and C minor exist in the same key, in the same scale or on the same key. So they're not related. They're not even kissing cousins. They're far, far apart from each other. But if we use the diminished gateway, we can connect the two tonalities in a very smooth way. So let me just demonstrate that. So A minor, and let's go to D minor, which is in the key of A minor. And then let's go to E7, which is still in the key of A minor. And now the gateway, G sharp diminished seventh, then invert B diminished seventh, and now guess what we're on? Yeah, C minor. So 
So let's put a little bit of rhythm in that, just to make it clear. hear how smooth the modulation sounded, it didn't sound weird or abrupt or strange or anything, it didn't even sound like that much of a key change and this is one of the wonderful things about the diminished gateway is that it's almost imperceptible, it's actually very hard to determine that a modulation has happened or you're aware it's happened but it just sounds so smooth and natural that we don't have this jerkiness or jumpiness that we would get if we went which is all sort of psycho killer really isn't it? Alright, so now we've got the basic idea, let's extend it a bit further. So, G sharp diminished, that will access A major or A minor, and then B diminished seventh chord will access C major or C minor. And what's the next inversion for our diminished seventh chord? It's D, D diminished seventh, that will access E flat major or E flat minor. Okay, so we've got another two keys which are very far apart. Now again, think about how far apart, say, the key of A minor and E flat would be tritone apart those two roots, those two keys. Oh my goodness, imagine trying to make that modulation and make it sound smooth in any other way. There's no other way of really doing it apart from the diminished gateway which uh, functions as the conduit, the stargate with Carl Russell between the two of them. Okay, and let's invert again. F diminished seventh chord. Now what can we access from F diminished seventh chord? Well, hopefully we're on it by now. We know we can access G flat major or G flat minor. Okay, and we invert again. Back to G sharp diminished seventh chord. We're back to A major and A minor. So here's the thing: from this one diminished seventh chord, from our G sharp diminished seventh chord, and any of its inversions, we can access how many different tonalities? The answer is eight. Eight tonalities four major keys and four minor keys, we can access A major, C major, E flat major and G flat major and the same minor keys, A minor, C minor, E flat minor and G flat minor. Now if you think about this carefully, it's not eight different keys, it's eight different tonalities but not eight different keys because we can access A minor and we can also access C major which are relative to each other, they're relative major and minor. So they're not really different keys but they are different tonalities and I think you can understand what I mean here. I'm differentiating between a key which for instance the key of C major and A minor are related to each other so can't legitimately be called separate keys but they're certainly different tonalities in that they are really modes within the same key. So I hope that's clear enough. So we can access eight different tonalities from this one diminished seventh chord and we can access very, very distant keys because if we think about these positions in the circle of fifths, thinking about our clock face circle of fifths, C major is at the 12 o'clock position and the next key we might access would be E flat major which is three flats back, it's around about three o'clock, uh, not three o'clock, it's the other way around isn't it, it's nine o'clock, nine o'clock in the circle of fifths and then we can access another three keys back from that. So you see that we can access keys which are really at completely opposite ends of the circle of fifths. For instance, we can modulate between C major and G flat major, which are on completely opposite sides. It's like different sides of the planet, North Pole, South Pole. You would never normally be able to modulate smoothly between, say, C major and G flat major. It just doesn't happen. But with diminished gateway, oh yes, can be done very very easily and produce really smooth effects. So I'm going to finish up just by playing a chord progression to you and just talking through the uh, the use of the gateway to see how we can modulate from key to key. All right, now this is going to be a bit impromptu, just doing it off the cuff, and I'll talk about it as I go. So <clears throat> let's start with uh, let's start with A minor, the same as we did last time. So A minor, a chord progression in A minor now, D minor, E7, then F diminished seven, and then let's go to F sharp minor from there. Well, now in the key of F sharp minor, let's go F sharp minor, D major seven, B minor seven, and then let's go to let's go to ooh, C sharp seven, D diminished seventh. There's the gateway chord, which is going to resolve us up to yep, E flat major. And now we're in E flat major. Let's walk around in E flat major for a little bit. Now let's go to G7, diminished gateway, C minor. Use this one before. Diminished gateway, G sharp, diminished seven. 
Come on, let's go to E major now. Works really well. Let's go to G flat major now. Ah, we'll stop there. So, did you see that every time we did the modulation, it sounded like a modulation. It was obvious we were changing key, but it didn't sound abrupt or odd or jerky or disjointed or displaced. It sounded very smooth and very natural. So that's how the diminished gateway works. It is a conduit between the keys and enables you to modulate between vastly distant keys in terms of musical interval, but yet make it sound smooth and connected. All right, well, I think that's enough for the diminished gateway. The best way of trying to grasp this yourself is watch the video again if you need to try and compose using the concept. It's the only way you're going to get these ideas into your own playing, your own composition. You've got to use them. You've got to make a conscious effort to use them because if you don't, you'll not really ever understand that anything more than a theoretical level. And theory, believe me, is utterly useless if it has no practical application. So go and write yourself some cool tunes using the Diminished Gateway and uh, get and play with your band, amaze all your friends. They'll not understand how you managed to get between that key and that key and make it sound utterly awesome. All right, well, that'll do for this lesson. I'll catch you again for another theory and harmony lesson next time. Until then, we round Jay Parker. Farewell. Don't forget to check out the website. Buy my stuff on Amazon, Twitter, SoundCloud, uh, YouTube, Facebook, blah, blah, blah. All right, till next time, farewell.